Hey guys, Jake here, and we are back to Kerbal Space Program. And today, I decided after, you know, we did a manned mission last time, this would be a probe mission. And the probe in question, we are going to be sending to the moon. Uh, just, I'd imagine it as more like a kind of recon kind of thing, sort of scout out and find like a, a suitable landing site for a future manned mission. And this will be a probe with a rover attached, so it's going to be like a base, sort of, there'll be a base station kind of thing, like a, a hub, and then it'll have a rover which it would uh, deploy. And then the rover would send stuff to the kind of hub, which would send it back to Kerbin, you know, to the space center. So for this, we're going to pick, first of all, uh, I'm going to use this probe core for the actual station. I say station, it's just going to be like a tiny little thing. Um, I'm thinking we put a fuel tank. Oh, I should attach it. There we go. And we have. Let's go. Let's actually put an SAS module under here. And it will be some landing legs on forward time symmetry. And I'm thinking, just because it's got, just got to land on the moon, so it's not going to be that much, we'll put some of these small engines here. I actually don't need that yet. Right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put... Actually, no, we will... We're actually going to decide we're going to build the rover on top and then move it underneath, because that's going to be a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and put down a rover mate as a body for the rover. And then we're going to need a probe core for it. We're going to use this flat one here. Let's go put it there, like so. I'm going to go ahead and put some wheels on as well. I'll use symmetry on these ones because I can. We'll keep them, we'll try and put them about halfway, so about there. And we'll make this a six wheeled rover. So that's the rover, what is that way is to forward, forward, isn't it? So, okay. We're going to put... I should we do that yet. We're going to put some um, little bits and bobs on this rover. So it can do science. Including a big battery at the back here. Is that going to look alright? Uh, that's just a rough placement. Yeah, it will, it will fit nicely. So we're going to turn on snap for this so we can have it sort of in the centre. That will do fine, I believe. I, I could always put... No, actually that won't work. Don't get rid of symmetry, no. I could have it sort of vertical like that. Yeah, I like that. No, that will that, that'll do fine. So we have a battery on the rover. Now we're going to need some solar panels. Put some here. Oh yeah, the symmetry's not going to work properly because it's uh, in the VAB. So we're actually going to turn off symmetry, we're going to leave snap on, and we're going to put maybe one here, another one here. That's four solar panels. It's just going to be do it, that, that should be enough because it's just going to be kind of little scale anyway, it's not going to go very far from the actual hub. So we've got a few little solar panels, and we're also going to put on Where's the lights here? I'm going to put on a light, which I'm going to use the rotation just to tap this around, get it to maybe kind of just a front that's too high. Uh, like that. Sort of like a little light in the, in the center so we can see what it's doing. If anything, actually, I might move that over. I don't know. I'll leave it there for now, but I might end up moving it. Because we're going to put some little bits on here, including a little antenna there. I like that. 
gonna turn off the snap and we're gonna quickly put some science instruments on. Uh, put that one there. We can just put the uh, thermometer there. I believe that looks good. Yeah, it looks good. That'll do fine. Although I will actually move the antenna over here. So we've got you know stuff on each side. So let's go ahead and put a little landing landing strut here, which we're gonna pretend is some kind of little sensor. I do this a lot with the little rovers. So I kind of angle it down. Actually, is what I do. Always down on here. It's that one. I'm gonna angle it maybe like that. And then to fix that little bump there, I generally just put like a little battery or something. Just like that. And then, yeah, it looks fine. Okay, I like that. That's good. Um, so what we're going to do though is we're going to take a small decoupler, flick it around so it's upside down, put it on top, and we're going to need some a strut. That one will do fine. Then we're gonna take the roof, mate. Actually, wait, that's ah, slight problem. I didn't think about not being able to attach that to there. Okay, yeah, that's a little bit of a problem. Um, hmm. How am I gonna do this? Because. Okay, that's an issue. Still, I didn't think about that. That was a bit silly. I know I can attach it upside down, but that's not really going to be helpful. And I just attach that, get that out of the way. I should have just built it down here. I can do that, but it's just going to get broken. <laughs> oh, what's that attaching to? No, I oh, it's attached to the bottom node, but that will just break and glitch and whatnot. At least I believe it will. Uh, we're gonna do a really quick test because I'm not sure about the properties of these and how they behave. So it's just gonna be a, probably just one there. I'm gonna lower it down a bit. And I'm just gonna deploy the gear, detach this, and then. Yeah, I'm just going to sort out the staging first. And this is just a really, really quick test to see if I can kind of get it to work. I, I don't know how it works exactly. Okay, it is night time. I'm going to time accelerate to daytime. Okay, I'm going to put gear down. That's going to put the strut out, but... We'll just put that back in for now. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and that's it. So that's how it would look landed, and then yeah, see, it does that switch to it first? It gets caught. Cool. Otherwise, that actually kind of works remarkably well. It didn't explode, which is what I was expecting to happen. But this is pretty simple, though. I should show you it here, just that, and then you can I don't know sense something scan something, whatever. Okay, I might better get this to work. It may require the smaller strut, I'm thinking. Mm, we'll see. Uh, it might be okay if I can put the decoupler on first. No, because you can't because that's the center part for all of it. I have to click that part to move everything, which means I can't just turn around and attach it. Uh, let's. Okay, I have to get rid of that decoupler again. Nope, not that. But that. Okay. Right, problems. Hmm. Can always use. A radial decoupler, maybe. I don't know even know how I'd go about doing that. Can you just attach them on, or I don't know. Okay. Um. 
let's, let's go ahead and try the smaller strut. Oh, no. And then we're going need to need our decoupler on there. That's not tall enough. Okay, I don't think this will work personally, but let's put these back on form. I'm just going to move these down a little bit lower, sort of as low as I can. I guess this is what the game's about, though. It's about, you know, experimenting and, and in the end finding something that works. And I don't know how long it will take to find, you know, a decent rover that works. I may have to redesign this rover and sort of build it from the probe core down. We'll see. Ah, the decoupler's getting caught. Okay, but the struts didn't. At least m some of them didn't. I don't know about that. I think I'm going to have to redesign it, to be honest. Which is unfortunate. I need to build it from this pro core. Ah, can I do th Ah, okay, there we go. That's exactly what I wanted. Can take off some of these struts now, actually. And just have it there. Okay, perfect. We are going to ha obviously have to test it, though, just to make sure, but that looks like it works fine. Gear down. That's that's gone out again. Let's put that in and decouple that. So there we are, landed on the moon, and then that couples perfectly fine. Switch to it, and we're going to ah, it is it's the wrong way around. Okay, well I can rotate that. That's fine. So I'm actually pressing backwards now, and it's you know right to go left. Losing power really slowly. I'm just going got enough panels, but it's not going to be driving very far. Put the antenna out. If we hit G, then yeah, we can deploy that. Put the light, which obviously drains power a lot quicker. Okay, very. That's good. Okay, I like it. All we need to do though is rotate. Yeah, let's like backwards in here. I should have noticed that. We're gonna grab the probe core. No, actually, we'll just grab this and spin it around. Like so. Okay, that's that. And that works fine. What we are going to have to do, however, is put some struts on it because it will wobble like crazy. That may not be enough. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, that's potentially that sorted. Although it's going to need more than this. This is just a. Right, let's get rid of that. Okay, what else we can we can need? Oh no, go back. Right. We are going to want a RCS fuel tank up here. That one should be okay. May put a radio attachment port on top to cover up that. That looks pretty cool. Okay. Um, put some satellite dishes on. Oh, no. We want to go. Maybe I'll test those out and see if how they look in a minute. I should have just done that in the first place. And then. There we go. Found there, maybe. We'll have a look at those and see how good they look in game in a minute. I have some of these regular antennas as well. Antenna, whatever. Uh, okay. Some batteries here or there, actually. Let's do that about there. Right. We're also going to stick some 
thrusters, RCS thrusters there, I reckon. To kind of help with control a little bit. I don't know what I'm going to do with the top of this thing. I may actually have it sort of launch like that with that, but this bit attached to the rest of the rocket, and then when it goes to land, obviously it will spin around and touch down. But now I've got to test to see if it can actually lift its own weight. And if it can do it, obviously, if it can do it on Kerbin, it can do it on the moon. Although I believe the gravity is... I can't remember how many times stronger it is on Kerbin than it is on the moon, so... Right, let's turn on the stabilizers. There we go, okay, and then let's just do a test. Why are we going this way? Okay, this may not be a good landing. Okay, touchdown on the moon. Decouple rover. I'll have action groups set up to do all these satellites, dishes and stuff, but for now I'm just going to have to manually do them. I need to also hit solar panels, that's what else I need. You can still rename the vessel as well, which is cool. So there we go. That's what, and then we had the rover be able to drive around. And then you use that much fuel actually, so it's quite good for f landing fuel. It's going to have quite a lot. Okay, I, I like this. I like this design. I think it works well. So we're going to go quickly into set up some action groups. We'll use nine for the comms arrays. And also, I actually do want to go to gear. Can I? Stop the uh, dish from. No, okay, I don't know if I can stop this little leg from extending when I hit gear. I mean, that's kind of uh, coded. Right, okay. Well, it didn't wobble. I noticed the rover was fine during the landing, so that's awesome. Uh, I believe we have everything we need on this sort of lander here. Thrusters, you know, stabilizer. Legs, engines, fuel. Ah, I almost forgot them again. Solar panels. Okay, we'll put some of these ones. Uh, where though? That's the thing. Actually, I can, I can just put four of them here because they're not going to extend until you know it's landed. So. Okay, I may stick an RTG on here somewhere, which kind of provides constant power. See if I can hide it inside here. Okay, sweet. That's just for when it's landing, and obviously the panels won't be deployed when I'm touching it down. So that's what that's for. I won't bother setting up an action group. It won't take long to deploy those. Actually, is that model A? Ah, actually, I think I wanted model B, is what I wanted. Yeah, B. They're the ones I want. Model A are the uh, shorter ones, which are short and wide ones, and B are the long ones. If I use the short ones here, it just it won't work. They'll be too close to each other, and it will just mess up. Although they're thinking about it, they don't. I don't know if they're going to clip with the dish or not. Control these ones are a bit smaller. If I turn them that way, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually that's probably the best way for them. Put them there. Actually, I'll just put them there for now. That'll be fine. Okay. And I've decided the name for this probe slash rover concept will be Horizon. So we're going to save that. And now I just need to build it on something big enough to get it to the moon. Okay. So first things first, we are going to put a decoupler there. Huh. Oh, awesome. I didn't think about that. Um, the radio attachment point was using its only node to connect to that. I can still use this, but I'm going to have to radially attach it. Rather than, we're just going to leave a gap, isn't it? Uh, well, sometimes you, you, know, you have to do what you have to do. I mean, is that actually attached, or is that... Because that will allow me to put a separator on it. No. See, 
now the issue is going to be trying to get it to line up. Well, I'll, st I'll work with that. That looks okay. Okay, so now we're going to want a sort of drive stage to kind of get it to the moon. I'm going to start with one of those. Actually, I can go smaller than that. It's just the moon. And then I'm going to put three of them around. And we're going to put three nuclear engines. And we're also just going to put some of those just to make sure it drains. Okay. And just because, we're going to stick some nose cones on there. And so they're going to be our drive engines which will take us to the moon. And then under that we're going to need another separator. Okay, so we're going to want to go... What else? Okay, we're going to need a main stage. But I'm going to put one of those. I'm thinking just one of the high thrust engines, just to lift this thing up into the uh, uh like to its circular to circularize with. I think that'll work. Let's just put some more thrusters down here. It's got some there. Those should help turn this stage as well. But for turning the whole thing, I'm going to use this. Put another separator down here. Then we're just going to put an adapter, a big RCS fuel tank, which will will disable the flow for this one here because that's going to be used just for landing, and you know adjustments after we've ditched this stage. We want this one to be used for launch. I'm going to use my uh, my lifter design, which it's not exactly efficient, I guess, but it works. So we start with that as a base. Although actually I think I'm going to do this one in what's known as a, I believe it's asparagus staging. Which I don't normally do actually, but it seems like I might as well try and be inefficient as, I, uh, as inefficient, no, as efficient as I can. That's what I meant to say. So we're going to build this in two times symmetry to start with. We're going to want struts going from the top here. We'll have a strut going to the, that one. And a strut going to this one. Like that. We're going to want. Should we leave that for now? Just put some engines on the bottom. And some winglets there. And okay, so that's that. Actually, struts would be useful. Going from this one to this one, and this one to this one. That one to that one, and that one to that one. So that's all copied over, and we have some symmetry there. Then what we do is we're going to copy this, keep it on times two, and put it here. That's actually a bit lower. I should fix that. No, crap, wrong one. Is that fine? No, that one's just a bit higher. I'm going to just control Z to get that back to how it was. Okay, it decides to get rid of that. But that's fine, we can do it again. Yeah, that would do. Okay, so now they're all strutted up, I believe, connected. Struts are going around here, yeah, whatever. Oh, that looks, looks fine. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put some thrusters on first, actually. Uh, how am I going to do this? Okay, there we go. Four there. And we'll have four here at the bottom as well. Okay. That looks good. So we're going to want fuel lines going from this one to this one and then from this one to this one I believe 
I believe. I don't know, we'll see. Um, got launch clamps on Tomes 4 going to here. And we'll have some more winglets there as well. Should put them a bit higher up. Okay, struts are all sorted. Right, actually not all the struts are sorted because we're going to want... I've noticed these RCS fuel tanks have really weak connections. It's always those that break, so I'm just going to really heavily strut that connection. And while I'm at it, I am actually going to strut the other connections as well because it's too often that I lose ships just because the struts break. Well, not the struts, but the connections between the, like the, the fuel tanks on these main boosters. Uh, we're going to want four times symmetry to connect that one. And we're also going to want put times eight, which is max. I have those going up here. It seems like too many struts, but then again, can you ever have enough struts? And the answer to that is no. You can never have enough struts. Right, save. And there we go. This is our lifter. Then we have the sort of orbital adjustment stage, then drive stage, and landing. So now we just need to set up this mass, mass, sort of mass of staging over here. Okay, so we want that those all oh, yep, we want this one to go at the same time and the launch clamps. Then we want what ones is it? I believe it's these ones. So those two which is those decouplers to go first. That one, so those those ones can break off. Then these ones. Then that decoupler, then engine that's fine, then decoupler, then engines, then decoupler and engines at the same time apparently, which I don't want. And then decoupler for the rover, okay. We're going to go for a test here. This may go horribly wrong, uh, we will see. Right, okay. Let the phys uh, the physics kick in. There we go. So first of all, we're going to look check where the moon is. Uh, moon is there. Is that a good spot? I'm not sure. I think it should probably be around sort of there normally in relation. I think you're supposed to do it when you can see it over the horizon that way. So tell you what, then we are going to type. Oh, I did kind of miss it. And I missed it again. <laughs> Gotta be, it's all about timing. Come on. It's any minute now. Any second. Okay, close enough. Stabilizers on. Good disable flow on this RCS tank before I forget. And lift off, okay. And we are spinning apparently. Why are we spinning? I do not know. Although actually I should probably turn off the thrust vectoring on these outside rockets. Didn't think of that. Why? Why the hell is it spinning? Oh, actually, I'm confused. I should, there's no reason for it to spin. It's all... You wait a minute. I'm I'm confused. Let's just restart the flight a minute. And oh, no, it's going to reset the time, isn't it? Well, I've got an orbital adjustment stage, so I can just get up and then I can wait and then go for it. So... First things first, we are going to lock these gimbals straight away. It may have something to do with the spinning, so... We'll let the center engine gimbal. Uh, disable flow on this tank, where is it? Okay, we're going to throttle up, but let's quickly turn on this view. So, that's ready. I'm gonna go for it there. 
No, it's doing it again. I don't understand. Seriously, what the hell is up here? I don't, okay, I don't know, but let's work with it. I'll just go to fly manual for now. Seems like the SAS is just trying to make it gimbal. Right, I'm going to try and... So we're just trying to get it back on course. Oh, actually, I might just have to put up with the... Now, if I see that you can see them going there, it's trying to spin us that way. But I kind of need to use the SAS to keep it just going vertical. And I'm not sure that those tanks are out. Alright. Unless it's doing it again. What the hell is. I'm really confused. As you know, as you can imagine. Stop spinning. I'm trying to correct for it, it's just making it worse. We need to really we should have made our gravity turn already. But I can't turn like this because the directions are messed up. I don't know which way I'm turning. And I'll just get us into a really terrible orbit. So I'm trying to slow down using the RCS. It's kind of working, I think. But then I'm going to look at our roll. We're going way too fast. Actually, that takes us out of the atmosphere. That's close enough. If I can just dip out of the atmosphere, I should be able to stop the time this uh, roll. There we go. Okay, is it trying to roll us anymore? Yeah, it is. Is it because this is upside down? If so, I can just stick a probe core on the rocket, surely, but I don't know. Oh, shit. I don't have... Oh, I don't have enough time to do this now, do I? There's too much. I'm just going to ditch these tanks to try and improve the speed. Come on, come on. They only had a little bit left in them anyway. I'm going to start losing speed and like, height any minute because you can see the speed going down. Ah, oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Let's quickly. Is that the way I need to go? It says to increase the yeah, Apple app says it's that way, but I don't believe it is. That's just slowing me down, isn't it? Yeah, we're gonna have to end this. There's just no way. I didn't even do my gravity turn. It's really fuel inefficient. I've got a feeling it is the probe being upside down. And to fix that, I'm going to try and add a probe call. We're gonna put it. Uh, oh, not that one. That one. Put it here. And we're just gonna have to put that there. I'm gonna surround it with struts because that probe looks not very, the probes aren't very strong. Save and we're gonna control it from there. So what I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna right click and just hit control from here and hope that will help. I don't know why the SAS was doing that. Just wanted to make it roll, so we'll let phys uh, physics kick in. Okay. Control from here. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, it's holding it left and right. It was just going one way before, so that's sort of normal. Trying to keep it stabilized. So let's hope so. Just locking the gimbals. That one's locked. That one's locked. That one's locked. And that one's locked. Okay. Then we're just gonna disable the flow on that fuel tank. Hit F5 just a quick save. Do that and that. And we are going to go. There we go. So I'm assuming it was just having the probe upside down that was doing it. Interesting. Okay, I have to try and re uh, remember that because it could be interesting to make note of. 
See these outside tanks are draining nicely. And now these two have already drained. Getting ready to ditch this one. When we hit 10,000, we'll begin our gravity turn. So we're going to use the RCS thrusters to assist with that. Alright, here we go. Let's pitch her over. She's starting to roll naturally because of the turn. We don't want that to happen. Can't stabilize. Okay, we are kind of pointing the right way. But that's something. Yeah, it's, it's correcting itself now. Almost ready to ditch these tanks. Let's have a look, check how our apoapsis is doing. We're going to probably go for an, a sort of an 80 to 90 kilometer orbit, just because it doesn't need to be high. There's no point wasting fuel getting it to a high orbit. That's those gone. So now we're going to quickly correct our roll, get back to sort of how we started. Check this, 90, okay, 100, that'll, that'll do fine. A little bit of an inclination there, but that's all fine by me. What I'm going to do now is we've got almost two, almost three full tanks of this main cell engine. That's actually a lot more than I was expecting. I'm not complaining because that's going to be very, very handy, but yeah. So we'll tell it to stabilize there, it's going to take a while because it's got a lot of mo uh, momentum behind it and these heavy fuel tanks but we've still got a ton of RCS fuel so we'll let it just work on it all right, the atmosphere, am atmosphere bleh, out of the atmosphere so we can do the sort of little I don't know if we should call it a glitch or not it's kind of like when you time warp it just stops all um, uh, momentum and it has to do that because actually it's not really a glitch because it's it's meant to just because it puts it on rails so it doesn't actually do have physics when they're on time warp I believe actually oh, we're gonna quickly untime warp there and we're gonna quick save just in case this messes up get a time warp to about there I'm just gonna go max throttle gonna use the RCS. So I'm going to turn off the gimbal, but sometimes this can kind of mess it up and it will send it flying in all directions if you just have one no gimbling at all. I'm hoping the RCS can counteract it. I'm going to have to keep a really close eye on the nav ball because if that starts to happen, I'm going to need to turn the gimbling back on. So we've got almost one and a half tanks. And it's going quite quickly. We've actually gone past the epoapsis, so I kind of should have done this a bit earlier, I feel. But I quick saved, so even if I don't make it this time, I can reload it and try again. Moon's kind of in the right place. No, I need to be sort of around here to go for the moon. So it's not really in the right place. Oh, so we're starting to move. No, no, gimbling, gimbling, go. See, it does buck around quite a bit with the gimbling, which is why I generally turn it off. Actually, we may do this. Maybe not on the main sail. Might have to use that orbital adjustment engine I brought with me. No, we did it. There we go. That's that's rough, but it will do. And we still we have enough fuel to start the uh, burn for the moon with the main sail, and we can use this engine as well. Why not? Although I may tug that engine with me just to use it as like a to slow down. We'll see. Okay, so we're gonna yeah, we quick save. So we're gonna wait till about here. Then we're gonna do a burn for the moon. Uh, Got to kind of eyeball it. So I'd say maybe here. I don't know. We'll see. Let's turn the thrusters on and shift this over. Ready to do that. Actually, you know how much fuel is in here? Seven hundred. That's a lot. But I'm actually just gonna ditch this completely and re-enable. Uh, fuel flow on there because I, I don't want to be dealing with that sort of heavy uh, momentum 
when we're trying to do these burns. But I can, however, use this engine to make my burn, to start my burn at least. And this is a thrust gimbling one, isn't it? No, it's, I, put, I picked the non gimbling engine. So I am going to have to use RCS to kind of keep me on the course. This won't do much, it'll just be a little, a little boost. It'll save me some fuel for these nuclear engines. Um, I was thinking I may have a few issues decoupling this tank. It may clip the engines. I didn't really consider that. Ah, uh, okay, we'll see. Much running out of mono repellent. Didn't pack enough on this upper stage. I should have put another one of these tanks here. Didn't think. That's actually doing quite well. And it's just under half its tank. I have to use the thrusters or is it it kind of moves and shifts around. At least it was. Yeah, okay. That's doing that's doing relatively well. I could be getting ready to ditch it in a minute. Let's go put this there and lock course. Ditch that. And the nuclear engines have gimbling, so that's I can just lock course there. It's going up rather well, okay. Awesome. And these things are very, very efficient. I mean you can look at the fuel it's draining. It's pretty pretty very pretty good. It's only used a little bit and it's gone up quite a bit. They're not very good at um sort of vacuum uh, when you're no when you're uh, in atmosphere then they're, you know they're terrible. It's when you get into a vacuum they're perfect. It makes makes them very useful for interplanetary travel. We're gonna throttle down so we don't miss our encounter. That there we go. So it's a little bit uh, early, I guess, because I kind of shoot it before and then catch it as it kind of comes around. What's that? A moon, moon periapsis. We'll get the periapsis as low as I can, really. I'm going to try and use the gravity of the moon to help. A 24, okay. We're going to go for that. We're going to hit quick save. And it is just going to be a matter of waiting again until we're there. But, you know, we, we've got that RTG I put in here, sort of still giving us power, so we don't have to worry about that. So that's pretty sweet. I haven't done a moon landing in a while, so I'm hoping that goes okay. So we're going to slow down here, and then we're going to... okay. Alright, okay, we're now within the moon's sphere of influence. That's the retrograde one, isn't it? I believe so. I'm actually not going to just put up with a really slow speed and not use any RCS thrusters just because I want to try and save the fuel. The probe cores have really low torque, and that's why. Oh, wow, I'm actually crashing into the moon. Um, okay, that's kind of bad. Is that prograde or is that retrograde? I have no idea which one's which. I've just completely lost it for a minute there. That is retrograde. Okay, oh, God, no, 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 back, 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 back. Is that? I can't tell. I'm going to have to spin round and just check. Wow, I thought I set it up. No, okay. Okay, that is prograde. Is actually, that's actually kind of what I want. Right now, I want to get this so we're not about to crash into the moon. Got half a tank of RCS fuel. So I'm just going to quickly time warp to stop that moving. Is that actually going to help? I don't know if it's going to help at all. I'm actually just spinning it around and... Uh, I don't know what's up here. Am I controlling it from the wrong core or something? Oh, I just remembered. Yeah, that's because I've switched cores, didn't I? When I, I ditched that other core when I... Um, what do you call it? Uh, decoupled the lifter stage. Or drive stage, I think it was. Yeah, this should be retrograde, which is why I'm slowing down, and that's why I should have... Yeah, here we go. Okay, well, it looks like we're going to be landing now. I'm just going to try and put it maybe as close to there as I can, I don't know. Half, we're half full for these. 
It's actually slowing us down remarkably well. Uh, we're just going to have to quick save because I need to make sure I can you know, stay on course and retry this if I need to. Make sure I start slowing down quick enough as well. So that is technically our retrograde, even though it shows us prograde. It's annoying, but I'm just going to have to bear with it. I don't want to start slowing down. Ah, maybe now? These engines aren't going to be very good, so I'm hoping to use just as much as I can, then decouple, flip, and then use these landing engines. So we've got a, is it a crater there? Yeah, that's the edge of the crater, isn't it? Yeah. We can investigate that at some point. We're actually getting kind of, kind of low. I, I don't know, I was hoping, I should, maybe we should have done this a bit earlier. We'll see. <laughs> Nah, no, I think we would be fine. We could probably land with these nuclear engines if we had landing gear on them. Or not, we're still getting pretty low. I'm tempted to switch to the landing engines in a minute, because I want to have enough time to. I don't know, we'll see. Oh, no, I have faith in these engines, come on. Please. <laughs> I'd rather, I'd like to do this on the first attempt. Keep it on this retrograde, because then it will keep me slowing down. Yeah, the wheels are getting. Yeah, these will slow us down enough. Too much, in fact. So now we have to aim for the retrograde symbol. I think we can get away with not using the uh, RCS fuel, to be honest. That was the nuclear engine sitting in the ground. Let's just get that on course. That's it. We're I think I cancelled out most of my horizontal movement. There we go, touchdown. Okay, quick save. Oh, sweet. Okay, there we go. We have touchdown. Let's deploy the comms and the solar panels. Yeah, they are going to clip through. Okay, well, yeah, who cares? Doesn't really need them because it's got that RTG built in, but they look cool. Yeah, they look fine when it's directly, the sun's directly above. Okay, sweet. Actually, it was a really nice little um, sort of plateau here. It was kind of. So I don't know if that's the word, but it's all hilly over here, and then we've got this nice little flat area, which is this is a good landing site. We use zero fuel almost. Look at that. That's very, very well. That we've still got half a tank of mono propellant as well. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and decouple the rover. Switch to it. And let's put that that away first. Okay, that. Yep. So let's go. Uh, why are we not driving properly? Oop, careful. Uh, okay, I didn't think about the gravity on the moon, so it's going to be a little bit awkward to control, but there we go. We're out. We're... Yeah, we're, we're not bad. It is a little bit skiddy. It's kind of drifting a bit. But it's fine. It'll just be, kind of be slow. I'm going to turn fine control on, actually. That should help. Okay, there we go. We can we'll go over and scan that rock, actually. That's, that's what we're going to do. We have a light, which we don't need right now, and it's just going to drain power. So we can turn on our science instruments as well. Gravity detectors, the accelerometer. The, well, we don't need the barometer on. It's uh, in a vacuum. Uh, and the thermometer. We gotta try and turn around here. Come on. There we go. And we'll go over and pretend to scan this rock because why not? Oh, careful. 
Yep, we're going to have to be really careful with this rover. This would be better suited for a planet like Kerbin, where the wheels, you know, actually can do something. I think the, the bigger rover wheels might be of more use here, but I couldn't really have this giant rover. So this is kind of pushing it at, you know, 2.9 meters a second. So I'd imagine this... Actually, I should pull the little antenna, shouldn't I? There we go. So I'd imagine that sends little... It's like a short wave. It sends signals to that, and then that beams them back to Kerbin. That's how I'd imagine it. Got the... There we go. Light it up. That's, that's pretty cool. Oh, oh, careful, Jake. Don't push it. Okay, so we just slow down. Break, quick break. Okay. I'll turn off the. We'll leave the light off now. And there we go, and we'll just turn the brakes on. And we'll leave it here for now. We'll pretend it's doing science on that rock. We've got the actual Horizon Hub is kind of over there. What should I call this? Actually, it's just going to be called Horizon Probe. You know what? Actually, we'll do. We'll change that to Rover. That will do for now. And change the yeah, change the light to that. If we switch back, actually, and what's this one known called at the moment? It's a probe. That should be a lander. Then if we go here, we'll see. We've got the yeah, you've got the Rover symbol, and you've got. You can't really see it because they're too close to each other, but. Yeah, okay, that's actually, that's my first moon landing in quite a while, and that's my first rover I've ever delivered to another planet as well, so that is pretty sweet, and it went really well, and I'm, I'm happy with it, that's awesome. I may send a manned mission here in the future to check, check up on the rovers and whatnot, maybe collect some more information they couldn't send over the comms antennas, I don't know, we'll see. We'll switch back to the rover, just... Have a look. See if we are. I want to see if I can get a shot with the rover, the hub, and maybe Kerbin in the background. That would be cool. So we'll just quickly wait. Actually, actually, I want to do a nighttime test. Let's see, let's see how well this. Oh, I'm still on time warp. There we go. Let's see how well the light works. Oh, there we go. Look at that. I didn't know if I'd put it at the right angle, and I didn't actually check, but that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to do. So now we're just going to quickly turn it around. Get it back to the rock there. Put the brakes on. We'll turn the light off. And we'll wait till daytime. Can I not see Kerbin at all? I should be able to, but it's just a matter of where. Uh, let's go to the map. It should be the other side of... well not yet, but it should be... Okay, it should almost be visible. I guess we've got to rotate one around. I should be able to see. I saw it when I was landing. And that's just because I was higher up. I guess, oh actually, it derp isn't it tidally locked, isn't it? So this is, I won't be able to see it. Let's get to daytime. I guess if I I saw it when I was higher up because I could see over the top of this, I was kind of just coming into land. And as I land, it's so close. If I was kind of over here, I could probably see it. But okay, well, Rover's been here for quite a while now, a couple of days. But we'll leave it here. We'll leave the hub sort of there, beaming back its signals. Obviously, lots of electricity. It's not going to run out. Okay, sweet. I'm really happy with that. I'm going to go to the space center. Have a look at the tracking station, and we'll see. Uh, Orbiting Kerbin? Horizon? What's this? Oh, that's probably the drive stage, isn't it? Or the. Not the drive stage, the orbital stage. Yeah, here it is. It's because it's got the probe core on it. It's probably out of power, isn't it? It's, yeah. We'll end this flight, because that's doing nothing. Okay, I don't mind leaving this random debris here, but it's. Um, the, what do you call it? I don't want it cluttering up this list. That's why I got rid of the other one. Okay, there we go. So we have Horizon and the Rover for it.
perfect. Okay. So that that's this episode's probably gone on a little bit longer than I was hoping, but still, I hope it was fun to watch and hope you enjoyed. And if you did, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.